All right, guys, we are here. What is popping? Here today to talk about our week seven match of the GBA. You got your coach of the Gym Chargers. Today we're playing my buddy Joey, PokeMMD, coach of the Bronx Bear Ticks. Very well anticipated match for this week, week seven. And um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting match to talk about. Uh, Joey, of course, being a great friend of mine and all that, you know, I've known him for a while, very long time, uh, has helped me through this crusade known as YouTube. And uh, now we got to fight against each other, so <laughs> should be uh, should be a fun a fun viewing for you all today. Um, so yeah, and looking at his team, I guess we could talk about that real quick. He brings a team of Necrozma, Zygarde, Salazzle, Linoon, Magnazone, and a Whimsicott. And of course, we're bringing the team from yesterday's building video. So check that out if you want to know all the sets that I'm bringing. Link in the description below. First impressions of his team: the Linoon definitely caught my eye. It is a belly drum line noon, uh, of course, so I figured that he'd have to have built around it in some way. I see the Whimsicott there as well, so I'm thinking, okay, this is probably going to be Memento Whimsicott to try to set this thing up. And maybe like screens on his Necrozma potentially, because I feel like that's his only potential stealth rocker. So it kind of makes sense that he'd have like rocks plus light screen and reflect maybe so that he could set up the stage for... Some of his offensive mons, and I can see like the three middle mons there. We got Linoon, Salazzle, Zygarde. All of those three can set up, and I mean, Zygarde can be very threatening with Coil or D-Dance. Um, with Salazzle, he can do like nasty plot stuff, and then, you know, I already know Linoon's a belly drummer. Uh, I guess the Magnuson was the one Pokemon I wasn't really too sure of uh, going into this match. Just upon preview, it could be, you know, something like AV or Specs or Analytic or something, or even like Magnet Rise or... Uh, or I guess Scarf is another potential option to outrun the Mega Pinsir, which I didn't bring. I didn't bring a lot of things, actually. I didn't bring Mega Pinsir, I didn't bring Hoopa, I didn't bring Empoleon either. Empoleon's taking a break right now. Best Defogger has to take a break, because uh, you know you already know it's going to come back strong next week, so that it can flex. But I figured that it, it just wasn't great in this matchup because of, uh, you know, Magnezone trapping in, Z Zygarde Thousand Arrows, things like that. And um, I guess he kind of he kind of seemed like he prepared well for Empoleon as well, because I brought it like every week except this, I think. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I felt like his potential leads were either going to be Necrozma because of the fact that he could, like I said, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe this is like a screens Necrozma with rocks or something. Or he could also lead with his Magnezone, maybe for a Volt Switch momentum, just to try to get off that early momentum scouting. Or even Whimsicott, which could actually do the same thing, but with U-Turn. And even just, um, I guess, Leech Seed and do a lot of, a lot of different annoying things it can do. Um, but yeah, like I, I kind of had to find out what his sets were just by going into this match. I figured my best lead was going to be the Kiram just because of the fact that my win condition in the, going to this match is definitely going to be Kiram and uh, Girder actually puts in a lot of work once we get rid of the Necrozma. And I mean, we have like Silvali Ghost as well, which is another Pokemon that we did recently pick up. I traded Incineroar. If you guys don't know, I, I left an annotation in my team builder yesterday. Traded Incineroar for Silvali because I felt like the speed was nice as well as momentum and all that kind of stuff. And just parting shot and having access to all types. Super, super useful. Um, so I do have Silvali Ghost on this team, which uh, we'll hopefully see sometime. But yeah, like I said, I figured that I'd lead off with the Kiram here because Kiram just puts in so much work. It's AV, modest Kiram, so it hits really hard, not locked in, and nothing can set up because it has Dragon Tail. I have many ways on my team of dealing with setup, so... I kind of felt a bit confident going to this match if he was trying to do some kind of setup thing with Linoon. So let's just figure out what happened here. Enough of me talking. I gave a great intro and let's just get right into this game and begin and witness this match between myself and Joey, Pokemon MD. Let us begin. So he is going to be challenging me, of course, and I lead off here with the Kirim. As uh, what he actually leads up with here is his Necrozma, nicknamed uh, Necrozma, as he likes to call it. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But yeah, so turn one, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go for the Ice Beam, gauge this thing's HP and defense and whatnot, and just figure out what kind of set he is. And he takes that pretty well and just decides to T-Wave me turn one. So my Kiram is T-Waved. I guess if he's playing from a point of view where I may be Scarfed, I guess in that sense he can really play around me. But I'm not Scarfed, I'm AV, so I'm going to pretend, of course, that I am locked into this Ice Beam and just click it again. As uh, it does about the same damage to this Magnezone as it did to that Necrozma, so I'm guessing that this does not have much bulk investment likely going to be a scarf set um, if anything or even like a max speed spec set so he goes to the flash cannon as i go to my gligar which is very spadef bulky and i eat that really well so i'm like okay this thing has to be like scarf or something because there's no way he's or or it has to be magnetized but he has to have a lot of speed no bulk and just be fast or something so i'm gonna go for the earthquake here just because um 
in case he wants to flash cannon again, expecting me to switch out or double predicting his switch. So I get off a nice, decent amount of damage here on this Necrozma. I'm just going to go for the SD because boosting on his team is really great because his only switch into this thing is his Whimsicott. And I don't think it can really do much back, I guess. Um, so he knocks off my Aviolite, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not too bad. I can just go for another Earthquake here as he does that and knock him out. Um, the crit, I don't know if it mattered or not. Like, it was pretty close in terms of the roll from the regular Earthquake and the plus two Earthquake. So, I don't know. Like, I don't think it would have mattered because I just would have knocked it out anyways. But he goes to Salazzle and I did this in the calc. I'm like, okay, I, I calc this and I'm like, I, I, I live if he's not choice specs. And I actually do not live this uh, from that range because I'm a Spidef Gligar. I would have been able to live if, if he was not choice specs, but this definitely confirms to me that he is choice specs. So I'm going to go back into my AV Kiram which can sponge any hit from a spec Salazzle. And he's gonna switch out here into his Zygarde. As I'm just gonna go right for the Earth Power, I'm playing in a way where I'm not revealing that I am, uh, you know, not locked in or anything. I'm gonna pretend that I'm Scarfed. And that does pitiful damage, so I'm like, this has to be AV Zygarde. And I know that he'll probably not have a Dragon move on it, so I stay in as he goes for the Rock Slide, doing a decent amount of damage, trying to flinch or parry me, but I can break through it uh, of both of those and just go right for the Ice Beam and knock out this Zygarde here, so not even the AV would allow it to live because I am modest Ice Beam. Uh, he goes into his Salazzle now, thinking that he can take me out with an Overheat, but um, I checked every calc here and I actually lived this Specs Overheat from Salazzle. I get Para though, which is so unfortunate. I would have been able to knock it out with Earth Power. So he is going to go once again for the Overheat, but actually it misses, <laughs> which is crazy. I can go for the Earth Power here as I dodge the Overheat. So I guess it kind of makes up for that Para there. Uh, um, <laughs> it was really unfortunate for him. I'm sure he was like screaming on the other end or something uh, after that play. Uh, after that, because Salazzle was so good versus my team if he actually kept that alive. Um, but yeah, I think he probably should have gone into Whimsicott expecting Earth Power and then just picked me off with an attack or something. But he goes into it now and goes for the me uh, Memento. So I guess he's kind of going for game here. And um, I go for Ice Beam, it fails. He brings in Light Noon, which will likely just go for Belly Drum, try to set up and sweep me. However, you know, he's going to go for that right now. And like I said at the beginning, I'm AV Kiram. There's no way that this thing gets set up on my team because I have Dragon Tail. So I send that boy flying and Light Noon's out of here. And he goes into his uh, Magna Zone, which at this time, I mean, er like every mod on my team can just take er both of those mods out. And he forfeits the game. So very uh, uh, for unfortunate match for him, of course. I'm really happy to be won. But, um, but yeah, so that's going to be the game, you know, and uh, I think we did really well. Like, even if even if Kiram got parried, as as long as he didn't have, like, play rough on his Lai Noon, and I, I do recall he did not have play rough on his Lai Noon, um, Girder from full actually takes a plus 6 E speed from Adamant uh, Lai Noon after its belly drum. And, uh, I mean, we would have been able to just go into that and win with, uh, with Girder just, like, cleaning up in the end or with, um, yeah, just any, like, any one of our mons could have won, I guess, at that point. But yeah, GG man. I don't think he's gonna upload this match actually, because I think he told me that he did he did not want to upload this match at all. So um, yeah, there it is, and um, you guys can watch it here. I think we did really well. I'm proud of the way we we did it. I mean, like in this tournament, like I I, I wanted to win. I know this meant a lot for Joey to win, but I still wanted to win I, regardless. And because I'm I'm also trying to do my best here, and uh, you know, trying to make playoffs and everything as well. But yeah, like he, he he just did not have the right matchup, I feel, versus my Kiram, especially with his team. Um, I think it all just really came down to matchup at the end of the day. Um, and a lot of the prep work that I did, um, especially since I brought a lot of things that I have not brought in any of the other weeks. So that's one factor I think that really helped us out in this match for sure. With, the, with such a big win as well. And like the way I'm pretty sure that this match works, like it was 5-2 and then he forfeit. Um, because of that, I think in the GBA rules it says whatever the forfeit is, like it'll be 5 0. But yeah, anyways, let me know what you guys think, of course. Looking forward to hearing from you all, as always. And uh, I will see you guys on the next video. Goodbye, friends.